Welcome to Comfort Havoc number two. I am your host, Echo Fan Grey Wolf. This is part two of cyberbullying. If you've seen the last video, I got to talking. I showed you eight plus videos of me and how all this shit began. I talked to you about the late great Hannah Kimura, who died and didn't even reach 25, I think. And um, she was cyberbullied. I was recently cyberbullied, but I've been bullied all my life through school, from kindergarten to college. And most of it has been about my race, about my height, my inability to get girls, um, my love for comic books and comic characters, uh, my drawings, everything. Cyberbullying is a whole new level of horseshit. Cyberbullies tend to find a way in, and everybody and their mama got computers now. But back in the early 90s to the mid 90s to the late 90s when email and Jeeves existed and Everything was this and that, and all of a sudden they started having chat rooms. And chat rooms was the downfall of it all. Because once you started having chat rooms, kids started having chat rooms. Kids even broke into adult chat rooms. And this is where shit went from big deal to oh fuck. And then there became MySpace, and then there became Facebook, and then there was Kick and all these other social medias. And none of them have guidelines that can prevent social and cyber bullying. Because if that was the case... They cancel a lot of people. However, a lot of social media bullies the people that make social media great in the first place, like native TikTok. All right? A lot of my friends that are full blooded natives have been shut down for some bullshit, and TikTok smiles about that shit. You do something about MMIW or MMIWNG, which is murdered and missing or missing and murdered indigenous women and girls and all of a sudden your TikTok's canceled. Instagram has done pretty much the same thing on certain cases and we can't get the word out and then there's pipe three just like there was standing rock but this isn't about that this is about cyberbullying so let me stay on track because I tend to wander off track sometimes and I echo it out so that you guys understand that the fang of a gray wolf is sharp and deadly. Just like my Cherokee fire, it can never truly be extinguished even in death. So let me put it to you nicely. Cyber bullies tend to have a thing just like regular bullies. See, bullies tend to do things to make themselves feel better. Why do they do that? Because they do it because there's no consequences with their actions. You know, let me, let me take this off and push my hair back. Because it's going to look like crap in the morning when I wake up. And I have to go to school to get my computer fixed. Not the one that I'm currently filming you on. But yeah. Bullies have to make themselves feel better. The best way to make themselves feel better is to make someone like you or someone like me feel bad about ourselves. Picking us to the point of where we want to unalive ourselves because this makes them feel good. Especially when they tell you the world will be a better place if you didn't exist. Let that sink in. Wait. Let it sink in for a second. I'm going to get these things off my screen because they're distracting me. Let it sink in. Have you ever in your life been told someone, excuse me, been told by someone that the world would be better off if you did not exist? That the world would be a more peaceful place if you didn't exist? That your existence is disturbing me that you're breathing up all of my air. Well, see, when I was younger, those things were told to me to my face. They weren't just told to me over a computer. They were literally told me to my face by people who were not mixed. Now, grade school, middle school, high school, James, you're breathing up my air. We don't like you. You're a half-breed. You know, all kinds of things. And then there were people who would bully me accidentally, or maybe it was out of spite. And that would go to the dude who played I Got Friends in Low Places at my job for three fucking years who constantly called me chief. The only thing that's different about bullying now was that it's on a screen versus in your face. See, in your face is worse because the person that you are bullying might actually physically strike you in the face and knock your ass halfway to hell, which is probably less than what you deserve. But see, now you have cyberbullying. So now it's so much easier to be a keyboard warrior just... Oh, your mother smells like shit. Oh, you don't know if that person's mother is even alive, but you want to make them feel bad. 
Your daddy's dick is too small. You are pre cum. Let's see, what else can we do to insult this person? Ugh, you're a fucking half breed. This is why we don't like your people. Yeah, your people smell like Eskimo crap. Uh, yeah, your peoples are Cherokee. Cherokees are weak. Uh, Cherokees were the first people to be defeated by the Europeans. You look like a stinky Cherokee. Do you shower? You smell like dirt. I didn't even know dirt had a smell. So, that was an example of things that people type, you know, Let's let's deep dive. You know, um, some of the things that they said to Hannah Kimura was evil. I don't have the ability to find that shit, but it was pretty bad. Now at the time, the Kubuki Warriors were still together. Oscar and Kyrie Sane were still together, and Kyrie got a message from Hannah because they were pretty close friends. And Kyrie sent messages to everybody within Hannah's facility. And it just didn't make it in time. And Hannah left a mother, I think an older sibling, and a puppy. She never got a chance to get married. She never got a chance to fall in love with someone truly. And the worst part is the comedian that um, she jumped on's case, she actually had a thing for him. So that's a double slap in the fucking face. And then half the people that was bullying her were of her own kind. Of Asian descent. Which is really fucked up. It's about the same kind of crap that Simu Liu is getting because he's not beautiful in, in China eyes. So they don't want him representing China. And I'm like, yo, dude, this dude is busted his ass to make the Asian community have a fucking hero that they deserve. And yet, here we go. He hasn't been cyberbullied yet that I know of. And Simu Liu, I'm with you, brother. And good luck. And I hope this movie blows the box office off the fucking water. And I know it will. And I know did you have another Crazy Rich Asians that's about to come out and some other stuff. And I didn't see the first one, but best of luck to you. I'm not really into dramas and love movies because my life sucks just that bad that I will stick with superhero movies because I know I can go to them by myself and not be judged. Okay. Cyberbullying is one of the top things that has caused more suicides in the years that I've been on Earth. And the younger people have been from the ages of 14 to 25. And possibly a couple of 30-year-olds. Because of some asshole on the other side of a screen. Like the one you're looking at right now. Just typing away hurtful and hateful things. Now let me explain to y'all how and why people will unalive themselves because of people saying things to them. You have no idea who you are talking to on the other end of that screen. You do not know the abuse that that person has went through physically or verbally or whatever. You do not know who you're talking to. You don't know who you're putting down. You don't. And one more put down, just one more put down, can, can end somebody's life. It's the same thing when they say 22 soldiers um, commit suicide every month. And that's something that you'll have to Google because I'm pretty sure I did that wrong. But that's why they had the 22 push-up thing challenge or whatever on social media. Because 22 soldiers do often commit suicide or hurt someone else in the process. If you don't remember the movie American Sniper, the sniper that um, um, Bradley Cooper played was killed by a fellow soldier. Which, in any case, I believe um, all of those guys were Marines. I'm not going to swear to it. Not soldiers, because I get bullied by veterans online because when I say thank you for your service, soldier, they take that shit the wrong way. At the end of the day, we are all soldiers. However, if you're a Marine, you want to be called a fucking Marine. Hey, you ain't got to jump down my case about that. Be glad I fucking acknowledged you. No, because if anybody thanks me for my service, I'm grateful. And I acknowledge them right back, regardless of if they're Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and whatever the fuck Space Force is going to be. I do not um, pick on another soldier because in Coast Guard, because of whatever military branch they decided to join. I was a nasty girl, period. So I was an Army, but I was a weekend warrior. So if someone calls me a nasty girl or a weekend warrior, I'm not going to take that as an insult, and I'm not going to be angry and clap back. 
You know, because especially if they're army, just like me, they're dog faces. The only difference is they're literally dog faces and I'm a nasty girl. We got the same training. We probably were at the same base at the same damn time. Just, you might have been on the other side of Sand Hill while I was on Sand Hill. You know, it's what it is. As for Marines, I'm not going to be mad if a jarhead calls me a nasty girl. But I'm not going to be mad if the jarhead says, okay, I don't like the army and you soldiers suck. And Marines, at the end of the day, they're still soldiers. They're just Marines. But they don't like being called soldiers because they don't want to be identified as a soldier. They want to be identified as a Marine. Dude, do you think I give a fuck? Acknowledge the fact that someone thanks you for your service. Yeah, I got the wrong branch. Okay. Same thing with airmen. I wasn't in the Air Force. Fun fact, I wanted to go to the Air Force, but I didn't qualify. Simple as that. I wanted to learn how to fly jets. But I'm also short, and they pretty much told me, go fuck yourself. No, no, that was it. I didn't take that shit personally. I joined the fucking Army. Glad I went to the Army. Uh... I have two uncles that were in the army. One on my mom's side, one on my dad's side. I'm glad I went to the army. Hey, fuck it. Still a soldier. I have one uncle or two uncles that went to the Navy. No. I have some friends that went to the Air Force. Got some friends that became Marines. My mother's daughter that she had under me, her father was a fucking Marine. Her brother was in the army. He's a fucking Ranger. At the end of the day... The USAF apostrophe S's. We are all on the same fucking team. If you don't like being called a soldier, hey, fuck you, I don't care. Be grateful that I acknowledge your service. Because you're out there fighting for me. I joined the military. Be grateful that another soldier actually recognized you. Period. Because a lot of soldier versus soldier hate. Even though it's a family friendly rivalry, some of y'all motherfuckers carry that shit too far. And then you get pissed off. And then when somebody fucking rearranges your goddamn dental work, you're going to talk about fuck around and find out. See what I did there? Why are we fighting each other? We're supposed to be on the same side. But hey, that's the way you want to play it. I got no quarrels. But if you bring your shit to me, I'm not going to be held responsible for what the fuck happens to you. It's just that damn simple. Regardless of your Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, Coast Guard, and Space Force, whatever the fuck that's going to be. But if you watch a lot of TikTok, you see that all the soldiers are joking around. There are videos about our training. You know, Army training's this. Marines training is this. And Navy had, like, thumb rustling or some shit. But Navy SEALs, who are also Navy, didn't, didn't really show their training. And then they did another one. We had Army doing funny shit. Had Navy doing real Navy training, underwater fighting. Had the Marines doing some crazy shit. And had the Air Force doing the thumb rustling. And then they had another one where it's pretty much the same thing. It's just that different people were doing different things, making fun of different branches of the military. It's a fun thing. It's not a form of cyberbullying versus what I showed you in the first video. However, you know, here's the thing about being in the military. We know what we sign on for. You're taught that from boot one, day one, or you get boots to ass. I mean, you understand that when you sign on to the military... Your MOS is probably the most important thing that you need to know. Why? Because my dumb ass got 11 Bravo. Because I scored really low on that ASVAB test during math. Now, ever people, they got alphas and fucking limas and hotels and all that shit where they got those high paying jobs. My dumb ass gets to go in first. Bullets are going to fly at me. They explained that shit to me Face down at Fort Benning, Georgia, with my face in the sand. Yeah, yo, you infantry, you're going to be tough, get tough, and you're going to die. Simple as that. They beat this shit into your head, verbally. They don't beat that shit into your head physically, unless you do something stupid, and then, you know, don't fuck your battle, buddy. It's not that difficult. Easy peasy, man. Now, once you get out of BC and you're fully enlisted, you know, things are a little bit different. They smoothed out a little bit. I didn't get that far because I got fucked up in BC. But I'm not the only one that got fucked up. A lot of guys I went in who were like in their 20s got stress fractures. They were immediately medically discharged. Those guys don't have to work anymore because they have to take easy, easy jobs. But they were also infantry. And those 300 pounds on our backs... Every day, all day in B.C. takes its toll. 
I didn't know what a fucking stress fracture was until I got into the military. I also didn't know the stress fractures could kill you until I got into the military. And now that I know that, I have a little bit more respect for people who don't drink milk. You should probably drink fucking milk. I was on calcium pills, but I didn't have any stress fractures. They just said that my old ass needed fucking calcium pills. So I took them. I think I still have them over there somewhere. I bought the shit home from the army. They wouldn't take it back. So, I mean, fuck it. Calcium pills. I don't take the motherfuckers no more. Just like my stomach medicine. I don't take that shit unless I'm absolutely fucked up and need that shit. Now, I want to end this on a peaceful note. I hope. Let me see if I can work this. If you're going to be on the internet, if you're going to be on social media, and you have something negative to say to anyone about anything, before you do that, think it over. Before you do that, search their profile. Because you may be talking to somebody's kid, man. Somebody's kid might have broke in, lied about their fucking age, typed in some shit, and now they're a Generation X, but they're actually probably a Generation Z or a Millennial, and because they're smarter than us, they just got in there and started making comments. I don't want you guys to cyberbully anybody. Ever. For the sake of Hannah Kimura, please don't cyberbully anybody. In my old YouTube channel, Kung Fu Africa number one, I got cyberbullied by some kid's dad, or the kid lied to me in recovery, or whatever. And I have nothing against the LGBTQ+. Plus. I don't have anything against the Alphabet Squad. Alright? Alphabet Mafia sounds horrible, but Alphabet Squad, please forgive me, if you're in the LGBTQ... What the fuck ever. You're in the Alphabet Squad. So... This kid, on my old channel, said one of my martial art videos was gay. My dumb ass retaliated. And I said, first and foremost, dude, I'm not gay. Secondly, I don't have anything against anybody that's gay. Thirdly, before you call somebody gay, those were not the words he used. He actually called me a bundle of sticks. F-A-G-G-O-T. I probably didn't spell that right, but the word is faggot, and I don't like using that word. But he called me a gay faggot. I think the comment's still up there because I don't have any control of that channel. And I wrote back on there, you don't know who I am. You don't know where I live. And if I catch you, I'm probably going to hurt you. Really bad for that little remark that you had no business calling me that shit in the first place. Uh-oh. I don't know what's going on here, but I think I'm still recording. Oh no. Oh no. Something is going completely wrong here. Okay. I'm still recording. So whatever that was, I was still recording. Um, And I told the kid, you know, you should never, like, say things like that. Then the kid came back, like, maybe a day or so later after reading my comments. He said, hey, first off, I'm sorry. That was my dad. And you are right. And I am sorry. So me, being over zealous and pissed off I also wrote I'm sorry too I should have never have said that shit I don't know who's on the other end of this screen I just know that I am an angry man and I like to fight which is why I made these martial art videos and when I'm wrong I can say I'm wrong so I apologize didn't think nothing else about it never got control of the channel again so don't know if the thing's still there don't care point being made is you have to be careful at who you are saying stuff to because you don't know what that person's going through you don't know where that person's been you don't know what their story is and worst of all you don't want to wake up one morning and find out that the words that you said on their computer which can be tracked back to you by the way just in case you didn't know that has caused somebody to unalive themselves please keep that in mind and before you think about doing that to anybody please remember the beautiful Hannah Kimura and remember all the children who unalived themselves before that back in the mid-90s to the early 2000s. Because of cyberbullying, more teenagers and people in their 20-plus age group has committed suicide. And if you are a vet or if you are a person who has suicidal um, tensions, there are numbers that you can call. You'll have to check your local listings because I don't know how far this video is going to make it to. But please take care of yourself. This is Echo Fangray Wolf. This is Kung Fu Havoc number two. Be seeing you.